Assalamu alaikum everyone. Last lecture we have derived an equation for temperature, a differential equation for temperature, which was dt by dv. Today we're going to derive a similar equation, but much simpler, which is dta by dv, where ta is the ambient temperature. We're going to use this for a plug flow reactor. Balance on the heat transfer fluid. So you can see here the reactor and it's a concentric tube. So the, the inner tube is for the reaction mixture, it's the reactor. And the outer tube is where the heat transfer fluid passes. What is the heat transfer fluid usually called? You know that? Well, it's called coolant. If used for cooling, what if it's used for heating? Then it will be called heating medium. When the heat transfer fluid, when the heat transfer fluid maintains a constant temperature and when it does not. So the question now, if we introduce the heat transfer fluid at the entrance, the temperature will be Ta0. And if the fluid was used as a coolant, then as it goes down the length of the reactor or as it goes and it's surrounding the reactor okay down the uh, let's say down the volume of the reactor its temperature will increase because it's cooling the reaction mixture that means it's the heat is transferred from the reactor to the coolant so its temperature will increase but sometimes its temperature will not increase when is that in which cases? Well, to answer this question, maybe we should go back to the energy balance. Remember the energy balance that we have derived earlier, which was, let me just find a place to write it, D E system, right, by DT equals Q dot minus shaft work minus delta H right okay so in this case we have steady state operation no shaft work again I'm doing balance on the heat transfer fluid so it's that fluid which is passing around the reactor around the reactor come on so here we have Q dot equals T and how can we write delta ht well we can write delta ht by the integration of cp delta t right so mass transfer of the coolant let's simplify it assume constant cp times delta t which is the temperature at the exit ta let's call it ta you know ta1 maybe Tamam. Uh, minus ta zero so the question is when delta t when delta t equals to zero because ta1 equals ta zero or when it is so so small well let's find out let's find out so this equation can be written as delta t equals q dot over mass flow rate of the coolant times cp of the coolant so when do we have delta t very very small approaching zero well that could be the case if the heat transfer the heat transfer to the coolant is small compared to the heat capacity heat capacity not the specific heat capacity not cp C. No, it's the M dot C times CPC, which is the heat capacity, the total heat capacity, the billy, you know, of the of the coolant. So it, you have, want to compare how much food I'm putting into the billy compared to how big the billy is before it gets full, right? Before it increases temperature by one degree C. Okay, so when do we have M dot C CP is very large? Well, CPC 
could be larger or small depending on the fluid but not a lot but i have all the freedom to play with the mass flow rate of the coolant so the mass flow rate of the coolant is huge then this value is it's very small approaching zero so here which means the delta t is almost zero which means ta1 equals ta naught right so if the flow rate of the heat transfer fluid is sufficiently high with respect to the heat exchanged with the reacting mixture then the heat transfer fluid temperature will be constant otherwise temperature of the heat transfer fluid which is ta ambient temperature will vary along the length of the reactor let's derive a differential equation for ta with respect to volume because remember sure, the idea of whenever if i use like whenever I, I write an equation whenever i introduce a variable i need to provide an equation for for if i write the energy balance and i write in the energy balance there is a term there is the variable ta describing the heat transferred from the reaction mixture. So this T, if it was variable, then I need to provide an equation for it. That's why I want to derive an equation for TA. And it's gonna be a differential equation. Right, so let's derive a differential equation for TA with respect to volume. Here, Shabab, we have two cases. We have case A where we have co-current flow, as you can see that the coolant is flowing at the same direction as that of the reaction mixture. So the flow is co-current. Then we have the counter current where the heat transfer fluid is, is going through the reactor on the, from the opposite direction. Okay. Right. And let's look at recall something else as well which is related to the heat transfer so the heat exchanged the heat exchanged between the the heat exchange between the reactor and the heat transfer fluid tamam, at that differential volume well you see the differential volume here this is delta v tamam. That a small amount of heat exchanged, okay, which is delta Q dot, fundamentally equal, we can calculate it from the heat flux, because the heat flux times delta A. The heat flux, of course, equals the coupling coefficient or the conductance or the overall heat transfer coefficient times the driving force. And always the driving force here will be the temperature outside minus the temperature inside, then delta a of course i replace delta a with small a times delta v okay so let's conduct the energy balance around this differential volume of the concentric reactor we have one tube inside the other where the flows are not mixing this is the place where the reaction mixture flows into and this is the annulus the place where the heat transfer fluid transfer i mean flow through okay so there is no mixing between these two fluids the reaction mixer and the heat transfer fluid type so energy input or the energy balance how do you write the energy balance well the energy balance is input minus output equals accumulation right or accumulation equal input minus output so what's the accumulation here within this differential volume well i'm operating the reactor under steady state so the accumulation is zero what about input and output well we exchange energy through three different means through heat work and the energy associated with the mass right okay with the mass coming in and leaving out so heat that is it's a small differential volume so we have to write delta q dot and then we have the sorry and then we have the heat associated or the energy associated to the mass so mass coming in that would be plus m dot c the mass flow rate of the coolant times h 
C for the coolant coming in at V, coming in at V, and then leaving out at V plus delta V. تمام؟ Okay, what does delta Q dot equal? Well, equals U times A times temperature outside. So now I'm doing balance on the heat transfer fluid. So in fact, I'm standing. I'm standing here. This is where I'm standing. تمام؟ So outside for me is not outside here, of course, because the tube is insulated well insulated so heat is not lost to the environment okay but the outside for the heat transfer fluid is is here come on it's here so what's the temperature here it is t minus inside so inside is here temperature here is ta okay and then of course delta v Okay, and if you allow me, I will write these two terms in a reverse order and put a negative before it. V plus delta V minus M dot C H C evaluated at V. Tamam, please don't mind my mess here. And then, of course, it will be with a negative before the bracket. Tamam? Okay. Tamam. So what can else we can do? Well, we will divide by delta V, correct? Let's divide by delta V. Let's divide by delta V. Okay. Now what? Now we have zero equals U A T minus T A minus C H C evaluated at V plus delta V term minus M dot C H C evaluated at V all of this divided by delta V. Okay, now let's take the limit where delta V goes to zero. Come on, the limit for this term doesn't mean for the first term. Hmm. The pen is not working. Oh, okay. So the limit for this is meaningless. The minute the limit for this is also meaningless because I don't have delta V. So the only place with the limit makes sense. So here, we well, limit delta V equals to zero. So therefore, this term switch to the differential equation. Come on. So here we go. Zero equals U A T minus T A minus. So this term switch to the differential equation. D and C C divided by D V. Okay, and you know that m dot is m dot c is constant, right? So the mass the mass uh, flow rate is constant through the surrounding of the reactor, through the annulus of the heat exchanger. So this guy is constant, so it goes outside the integration. Tamam? So this for it will be written as m dot d h C by dv. Okay, how else I can modify this? Well, you know that dhc simply equals the cpc times dt of the coolant, right? It's not tc, it's ta because we a refers to the ambient. Tamam? So this is how you write dhc. dhc equals C P C D T. Oops. Here we write it again. D H C equals C P C D T A. Okay. And then we have D V. Okay. So if we substitute for 
for that buff term here. Come on. We'll get the following force can substitute it and take it to the other side. Come on, let's do that at once to save some place. So we'll have now m dot cpc dta by dv equals u times a times t minus ta. And then of course I can divide by m dot c cpc. Okay, so now we have a differential equation for Ta as a function of volume. Okay. Type. So, there we go. We have derived this simple equation for the balance on the heat transfer fluid where the flow is going in co-current direction then remember shabab, the v refers to the volume of the reactor okay what's the initial condition for this you all know that right you know that at v equals to zero ta equals ta naught come on ta equals ta naught Okay, very good. What's about what about the other case? What about the other case? Let's see what other case. What is the other case? The other case we have a counter current flow. So you can see that the heat transfer fluid is going through the reactor at the direction that is opposite than the direction of the flow of the reaction mixture. This is the heat transfer fluid going this way. The reaction mixture is going this way. So the reaction mixture always enters at V equals to zero, right? Come on. And leaves at V equals to V final. However, here the heat transfer fluid is entering at V equals V final. So, so if we take a differential volume to do the balance, this would be, of course, V. This would be V plus delta V. So when we do the balance, come on. So this would be the delta Q dot. But when I do the balance for the heat transfer fluid, you can see that it is entering at it is entering at V plus delta V, right? So here we'll have when you do balance here will be plus delta V entering at V plus delta V. And when it's leaving out it's leaving out at v so it will leave out at v okay the rest is the same therefore i there is no need to take the negative here sign okay so i'll just take the divide by delta v take the limit where delta v equals to zero so you get this equation this is for the counter current flow when you get this equation of course, when you take this to the other side, come on. Now see to the other side, you will have instead of T minus TA, you have TA minus TA, TA minus T. Okay, the rest is the same. So now we have two equations, one for the co-current flow, one for the counter current flow. But what about the initial condition? What about the initial condition? Well, let's see, let's see, at at V equals to zero, TA equals, hmm, do you know what the value of TA is? Well, I don't know because what I know, I know the value of TA naught, that's what I know of, but the value of t at v equals to zero okay you can call it t a2 but i don't know its actual value because i don't know up to what temperature it was heated or up to what temperature down to which temperature it lost it's heat to so we have an issue but no problem we're gonna learn how to deal with it
and of course you are thinking huh we're gonna use trial error yes you're right we're gonna use a trial error we're gonna guess a value for ta2 and check and check if at the exit i'll get ta not which equals the actual ta not and so on tamam okay so we'll meet in the second segment of this lecture to solve uh, problem see you soon